All right, hello everybody. Today I have for you a book review and that is going to be on The Chocolate War. I've read this book like 7,000 times but I don't think I've ever done a review on it. It is one of one of my favorites so we're gonna we're gonna talk about it. All right, so quick synopsis. The Chocolate War is one of the earliest young adult novels that was ever, you know, published. It was, you know, it was Cormier and Essie Hinton pretty much in the 70s um, but it was and a bunch, you know, those are just the big ones that have lasted. There were obviously a bunch more uh, less good authors, um, but The Chocolate War is about this kid named Jerry Renault who goes to this private Catholic school, um, Trinity, and every year they have this chocolate sale. And it is technically voluntary, but everybody always does it. But this year Jerry says no. And it kind of kicks off a whole series of events. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of corruption. It is so fucking good. <laughs> okay, so first up, uh Archie. So Archie is this kid. Um he is I believe he's a junior in this book. Um but he is a he's the assigner for this uh group called the Vigils, which are a they're a um they're a group of kids in the school who they it's kind of like a secret society. Um they end up they give assignments to these to these to the kids in the school and um and they're just they're stuff like um, unscrew all the desks so that they're just ready to collapse or like uh, like pfft, just embarrass yourself do something like that it's just, it's just dumb little teenage boy stuff because this is an all-boy school Archie is oh, what a villain I think that Archie's villainry is really what kind of um, uh, made me like the kinds of villains that I like today I mean Arch, if if you, Archie is that if you read like the Darkest Mind series by Alexander Brack and Archie is that Clancy Gray type of villain, he is just, he's just vile. Like he's and he's just like more of like manipulative. He's not like, he doesn't like he's not like especially like like academically strong or even physically strong. He's just he's just a manipulator and he's just sharp and it's just it is so so he's just he he's just so much fun. Um, I do have to mention the kind of what the fuckery of the sequel because there was a sequel called Beyond the Chocolate War um, that came out after this one, obviously. Um, it is, uh, I'm just gonna name some things that are in the sequel um, and that is a guillotine, a, a murder attempt that is unrelated to the guillotine. Uh, the guillotine is also used to possibly murder somebody, um, to try to murder somebody, um, a suicide, um, there's so much happening. Like it's like Robert Cormier just threw everything to the wind for the sequel. Uh, so that's that's fun. Um, but this is one of my favorites. Um, I mean, this is a book that I read for school in eighth grade. Um, because fun fact, uh, my, that's when my school started selling chocolates. And so my eighth grade teacher, English teacher was actually my dad. And he um, decided let's read the chocolate war. I'm not sure what he's trying to do with that. but. I, I ended up just absolutely loving it like I every time I see it I like a thrift store I end up buying it because of how I end up reading like I do not reread books that I that I have already read like physical books like I you know so like I reread time just push my some books back there um like I do have books that I you know read more than once obviously and I do have books like I'll end up like, oh, I reread this. I use it quite a bit, but I don't um, take books off of these shelves when I read them because uh, I have, you know, this giant book wall that has a thousand and fifty books in it, and I can't really justify taking books that I've already read. However, if I get another copy of the book, it automatically goes into the book wall. Like I don't just if I if I buy a book I've already read, but I didn't read that exact copy. Like if I read from like the library or like on ebook or something like that, I don't put it on my shelves partially because I'm, I don't have any room for my shelves. Um, but I don't I don't put it on my shelves. What I do is I put it in the book wall and then I end up rereading it. And so that turns into me having 7,000 copies of The Chocolate War. But it's fine because now I have a better way to um, get rid of these um, books that I read. And then I, because I, I don't need 7,000 copies of The Chocolate War, but I can, I've got this stack of books at the school where I'm the kids can get just they're just free books don't bring them back kids and take them so there's that um but yeah so this is i think so like i said like this is an early young adult novel it's from like 1974 or something like that exactly 1974 that's the year my dad was born um but anyway uh it's it's 
it's still very fast paced and easy to read and it's also very thought provoking provoking particular in terms of like personal freedom and like thinking for yourself because it's just it is this is like a massive book against fighting against the status quo even if that's not how the main character originally meant it um there is a part here where he the main jerry is constantly thinking about the quote uh, a t.s Eliot quote calling do i dare disturb the universe and while that's not exactly what the quote actually means um that's how obviously that's, that's how jerry is kind of um interpreting it and he's like do I dare disturb this little tiny universe by being something different and it's like it starts out as just something that he does just because he kind of has to but then it turns out something that he has to do and it's just it's just such an interesting book man it is just when it comes to like classic young adult this book I feel like doesn't get as much attention as like The Outsiders does and it's better than The Outsiders you know it's just it just is um but yeah, overall, this is one of my favorites for a reason. I give it five out of five stars, like I do every single time. Like when I reread The Outsiders and stuff like that, I'm always, I always go back and forth on what on what rating it. it's a four, is it a five? I don't know. But The Chocolate War is always a five because The Chocolate War is Robert Cormier is an amazing author too. Like I've read so many of his other books, and I'm just like constantly blown away by the stuff that he comes out with. But yeah, that is all I have for today. I'll talk to you later and goodbye.